Well, how do you do again? This is uh, Mike McGee, and um, I haven't been online for a while. Well, because I just didn't feel like making any new shows. And sometimes back, I got a letter from YouTube claiming, congratulating me that I got 100 members, which is a lot from 2017 to 2021. And a lot of things that have been happening along with me. Um, for 12 years, I had a limp on my left leg. And then one day, about three or four months ago, it got worse. And I had to go to get the courage to go to the doctor and I found out I need a new hip replacement. And boy, is that scary because I got to have it October the 13th. It'll be the first time I've been in, under the surgeon's table since I was a little baby. And, uh, well, I'm not asking you to pray or hope for me because usually that doesn't work anyway. Uh, I don't think it's that, it's that, it's not that serious. Although the other doctor at the other place told me I need hip surgery or else I might die from an emblem. He calls it an emblem. But it's on my left hip. And the result of this has increased my depressions and anxieties because of the pain and it slowed me down like an old man making it harder for me. The recovery is more about, uh, they claim about uh, six to eight weeks, and I read some not six, six to six weeks to 90 days. And uh, when I get back home, I probably won't be able to do much and lift much, and I'll have to learn how to rewalk. So it's going to be scary. Now I want to show you some movies I got in the past five or six months. I I didn't do any reviews because of the pain I was having and it just increased the stress. So I'll go over to go over with you fast. Um, well, the first one that I bought is I had participate in a uh, uh, what do you call it crowd fundraiser. Uh, which you get a DVD, you pay a certain amount, or Blu-ray. Uh, at Kickstarters, uh, Bob Fermanek 3D archi Archivist. Um, uh, also is, is uh, also is part of the Abbott Costello estate when it comes to independent films. He had this restored Jack and the Beanstalk, and I got the DVD version. And uh, well, I got my name on here too, and. Uh, it's, it's, it's better than ever than you see it on television. But of course, sometimes you'll see the, used to see the preview print, uh, the approved preview print before it's restored, which was a little bit longer. And this is the original edited premiere print, not the preview print. So it's different than the other versions you have seen. And, and, and it's, it's very good, it's very good. And here's the front cover. And I finally got from uh, Kino Lober the uh, Maria Montez and John Hall collection. And uh, the reason why I got interested in it, because even though I've seen Sudan and Gypsy Wildcat, uh, it seems that they were premiering White Savage. And I've been, May 1943, in glorious three-strip Technicolor with, with uh, not from Mexico, with Brazilian. She came from Brazil. She came from South America. Maria Montez and John Hall. And uh, I one time saw a horrible print from YouTube, so I took, took opportunity on this. And it... Um, stars in his first and only appearance in a Technicolor film, Charlie Chan. Yes, Charlie, yes, Charlie Chan. Um, let's see now. Who's that actor? Oh, yes, Sidney Toller. Sidney Toller. He has played Charlie Chan in those Fox films. And what he did, he played the doctor in his Technicolor film, and he put on a Charlie Chan act. He might as well been act like Charlie Chan, the same old Asian accent. <laughs> but um, 
the prints are pretty clear and, and restored and, and, and uh, White Savage was pretty good along with I've seen Gypsy Wildcat lots of times and uh, 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 what is it now uh, uh, Sudan and uh, these were pretty entertaining films of the 1940s during the war but unfortunately they didn't give Maria Montez a chance to do better things and uh, she died of a heart attack in the bathtub. I saw her autobiography in this Mexican channel. They made a, a Spanish autobiography about her. And I'm surprised they never did it in America, but it was for a Spanish channel. Even though I didn't understand much, I saw how she was struggling to become a good actress. And I finally got another film which was professionally financed. Uh, and, but produced by Bob Fermanek in the 3D archives, the sequel to Coming At You, uh, The Treasure of the Four Golden Crowns. I remember seeing this at the Martin Twin Theater back in 83, and it stars the same, uh, 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 what's his face? It starts, um, uh, it starts, um, uh, oh, excuse me, I'm getting nervous. It starts, um, uh, Tony Anthony and uh, where is it? T okay, okay. Stars Tony Anthony and, and Gene Quintana, who played the bad guy in Coming at You. And this one, he plays the assistant for the spies uh, in Tony Anthony's uh, kind of portrayal of Indiana Jones type thing in 3D. And. Uh, well, for a 3D movie, it's pretty good. And guess what? If you don't have a 3D setup, they give you the anaglyph version. That's pretty good. Uh, and, uh, well, the color is a little distorted, but it's better than nothing. And, of course, I think they got... I never watched... Uh, I don't watch... I got a projector, so... 3D projector. But anyway, uh, if you don't got an anaglyph version, if you don't got the Polaroid, they have the anaglyph version. Here's the other side. And... Um, they have a discussion as background you can turn it on that Tony Anthony was in low budget spaghetti westerns called The Loner and Coming at You was, was the first 3D version and uh, uh, the, the man who wrote uh, uh, the, did the music for A Fistful of Dollars agreed to do the music for this medium budget 3D picture. Um, um, Marco, oh, God, my glasses are bad. Let's see. Um, well, anyway, he actually did the music for this movie. And uh, uh, let's see what else. Um, it was also the first American distribution for Golan Globus, who would do those uh, kung fu movies with um, uh, Chuck Norris, Chuck Norris, and uh, this is, was their first distribution of a movie. But it, it was um, uh, uh, Gene Quintano and uh, Tony Anthony that actually financed this production, and. Uh, it, he also discusses how when he did Coming At You, he gave up because he had trouble with the camera and he went broke and he said he's going to quit the business. But some friend of his who owned an Italian restaurant refinanced it. But when he did this film, he did a different camera because the other camera was giving him problems. Let's see. And uh, last and not least, this was a surprise. It seems like, not Time Warner, but this is public domain, one of Marion Davis silenced Beverly at Grossark with the Technicolor finale was uh, restored on the, on the kickstand fundraiser, but the irony is I never found it. I never even noticed it. I would have participated in it, and I found this out online, and... Um, the thing about it is that its original two-color Technicolor cement finale was horribly faded, so I figure out, oh my goodness, it's not going to be as good as the 
good like the bust not going to be as good like that Buster Keaton sequence they're trying to restore which was not very good you see when the green fades it gets orange and um, well when I played it and I saw it I said oh it's not all that great but then later in the movie itself I'm talking about the finale but then later on I rechecked the faded original faded sequence and I looked at it again and I realized that it was a lot better than it was. It may not have been perfect, but it was a lot better than it was. It ha did have more of the detail that the, that the uh, orangey print due to the green record shrinking uh, didn't have. And here it is. And it was a very good comedy. Although I would say that the lights of old Broadway did come from Marion Davis print, but another print owned by, I think, UCLA that had the preserved two-color Technicolor sequence in that earlier film she did. And, uh, you know, was very, 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 you know, more preserved. Uh, but the recovery in this two-color two Technicolor finale ending was, was pretty good compared to the way it looks. What I want to discuss with you is, is, is a very kind of an interesting subject. And they, I, I heard somebody on YouTube make a comment about it and talking about it. And it was very interesting. So I think I, I could add my two cents. There are people out there who look at movies and TV shows and they see the actors and the characters and um, all of a sudden they can look at themselves in the mirror and see themselves as not very pretty or handsome or maybe ugly and the same thing you have some kids that do the same thing they see themselves as disappointed because they're not like the fantasy but here's the thing, there's a difference between fiction, autobiography, and uh, what do you call it, autobiography and uh, uh, f uh, documentary. And on cable or on internet or the live theater or the movie theater or on DVD and Blu-ray, the purpose of fiction is strictly to entertain. Uh, it's it's not designed to aspire to something unless it's an autobiography or and it's not really movies and, and uh, fiction is not designed to aspire and it's not designed to identify with but to enjoy the characters for the way they are and what it is is that um, it, well, it's the parents. For a long while now, unlike when I was growing up, uh, parents are not, I think parents aren't being responsible enough to raise up their kids and they're demanding the arts and entertainment to play the babysitter or to take up their parental responsibility, which is unfair to art because that's what they need to do themselves and maybe because they just don't know how like their mothers did uh, I remember when I was growing up uh, our parents trusted us so good that we would go to the movies on our own of course I'd see G and films but imagine how today parents let their kids go on their own to see a PG-13 <laughs> oh, no I'd see PG movies and um, G movies on my own in the afternoon and because they trusted us of course I was going to that strict Catholic school and obviously well we were taught right and wrong and well I guess I don't know it wasn't that but we just they just trusted us uh, these days I don't think parents let kids go see a PG rated film if they're 10 or 11 but they used to trust us. Well, it's because, as I said before, they're trying to demand that the entertainment be the babysitter and the parent, and that ain't good and that ain't fair to art. 
Uh, also, you got others that are demanding the art and entertainment be responsible for their politics, their religion, their morality. Well, if you want to make a movie with your political ideas that you know it's good for the human race, go ahead. But you'd have to produce in a way that's not going to be preachy. Because if you push a filmmaker to promote your political ideas, people are going to know be preaching. They're going to see nothing but bad in it because they felt they're being preached. Um, and if it's bad politics, well, they're going to notice that too and not enjoy the movie. But anyway, um, one needs to leave fiction and art alone. And... Um, Parents need to inform kids that their favorite characters and their favorite movie stars is about finding, the, appreciating them if, as enter, for, their, for entertaining them, but not to identify with them. And in movies of, uh, of fiction is not designed to aspire to neither because it's fiction. And uh, if parents tell their kids that, then they'll say, okay, that's the way that kid is, that's the way that actor is, and I'm totally okay. But parents don't, I don't think parents do that. Unless they do, I might be wrong. Some, uh, remember, this guy might be handsome, but that's because he went through the audition and he got the role, and you're supposed to be, you should be, a, or a woman, she's beautiful, supposed to be appreciating them for the fantasy, but not to identify because you're not them parents guiding kids. Um, I remember when I was growing up and I was a classic film fan, I was a fan of TV shows and movies, I never aspire, I never watched these movies and TV shows to aspire to do something, nor that I care to, to promote identity, I mean identity from the actors the men and women actors and their characters. It was just about finding them entertaining and I just didn't care. I just, you know, I, I, just, I just didn't worry about if I didn't look handsome. I mean, I didn't care. Well, maybe I was kind of a smart kid. But except for one thing, after I saw Cleopatra with Elizabeth Taylor, I was wishing that my, I was wishing that my mother was Elizabeth Taylor because of the personal problems at home. But this is when I was a little kid, Texarkana, Texas. But I'm sure if she saw me at that time, the actress, she would have physically gone up to me and said, your mother is the best person you ever have without being me. You're dealing with motion picture things and unless it's autobiography, and it comes to close to being accurate since the reality of the person might be so, their life might be so dull, they might have to, they might have to jazz it up like the, if it's an act, good, accurate, entertaining autobiography and it's about a good person, that's something to aspire to, but it, if it's a documentary, yes, but if it's fiction and art, it ain't desiring to, it, it, you shouldn't focus on it to help you how to live or help you how to look because it's just about fiction and art and entertainment and, um, Except, except for the way you are, except yourself for the way you are. And anyway, you're not an actor. You're not movie. Remember, they put makeup, they put glamour, and all that. And you have to realize it's part of the fantasy. But they're not trying to aspire you to be them. That's the thing. They're trying to get you to be enter, finding you to find them entertaining, but not to copy them or aspiring to be looking like them. So. You have to separate fantasy and reality. Enjoy the fiction of the movies or the cable TV show, the internet TV show, enjoy the characters. But separate fantasy and reality. Separate, this include adults too, separate fantasy from reality and you won't feel bad about yourself because those characters were not created to promote identification to begin with unless it's an autobiography or a documentary. That's different. 
and as a result you'll stop having those image problems because you'll be looking at the at the fiction or reading the fiction of book the right way that's fantasy and it's designed to relax yourself from reality a couple hours or if it's a book a couple hours a day then when you finish for a while finish watching the movie you go back to reality so that way you can deal with reality better because you took a rest from it and you won't have those identity problems same thing with fan to dolls and toys uh, those toys and dolls are nothing but fantasy third th solid fantasy images and uh, like Barbie dolls and uh, any kind of doll and and they're just designed to play they aren't designed to aspire to become and I think it's important for parents to even tell their kids when they give them a, a doll that you know this is you know this is for play but please remember this is a fantasy and has nothing to do with reality and this doll here is not designed to aspire to it to, 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 to achieve things in real life or even to look like the doll. Unfortunately, you have had a bunch of kooks. There's one guy who had a facelift to look like Ken. Ken doll. There was another woman who had her face changed to look like Barbie. But it ain't worth it going to the surgery to augment yourself or have so many facelifts look perfect because you are good as yourself and fiction and art is fiction and art now if you did like this show Please comment and subscribe. And if you want to criticize me, go ahead. We're here, we're here to, to have a fight. I mean, we're here to have a debate, to, or to talk. You know, you can say anything you want to. And I don't think I say anything that's shocking. Now, I do, now before my, I had my leg problems, I would do a lot of exercise, but I would never go to the surgery to get a face. I do head exercises and head shakes and when I recover from this hip thing, I'm going to be more active in exercising because I do need to exercise more, but I'll never go to the surgeon's table except to put in a new hip. That's going to be October the 13th. And I hope I come out okay. So I will talk to you later, and I want to say hi to you new YouTube, new YouTube subscribers. That YouTube told me, but as I realize, it's 2017 to 2070, 2020, 100 subscribers. But I guess it's better than nothing. I'll talk to you later. Bye.